Sit the fuck down, you raggedy drunk fucks. What's going on? I've been knowing, I've been knowing this man for about, what, 10, 15 years. He's been on Bad Boys of Comedy. He's been on HBO. He's been on Comedy Central. But y'all going to see him tonight. This is my man. Y'all give it up. Give it up for Alex Ortiz. Uh, hey, sit the fuck down now. It's over. What's up, y'all? It's good to see you out. God damn, I didn't know what kind of crowd to expect. I see Latinos in the house. Fuck yeah. Ah, I got back up in this bitch. I see black people, for sure. White folks, howdy. I'm glad to see you guys out. This whole thing that I'm telling you, man, it's so good to be back out again. This whole pandemic thing fucked everything up for everybody. It was, it sucked. But I tell you, some cool things happened out of it. Like, I got to be closer to my kids and my wife and shit over the last nine months. It's been really cool, you know? But we had to find shit to do. Because I'm glad this shit happened to my kids. It didn't happen to me. Because my kids were better prepared for it. They had fucking iPhones and, and fucking MacBooks. And, you know, how many TVs you got in the house right now, dog? Three? You broke. All right, uh... The average is five, dog. You're not doing well. <laughs> we had one TV at the house when I was a kid. And don't go outside? Fuck you, don't go outside. But it's crazy. So we had to find shit to do. And I started, like, after the pandemic, there's a whole pre-pandemic, post-pandemic thing. Like, now I do shit I didn't do before. Like, now I, I manscape. <laughs> you manscape? Yeah, you do. I know you do, dog. Yeah. <laughs> you look like you manscape. You manscape, dog? You do? You don't look like, I thought you like had an afro and shit down there. I don't care if the hair gets caught in the back of her throat. Fuck her. She got work to do. I don't know. I started manscaping because I was in the bathroom and I got, I was like shaving my beard and I got bored one day and I looked down and I was butt naked and I was like, oh shit. So I started shaving it. Do you do like shapes and shit? You don't, you don't do special shit like walking to your woman? Hey baby, it's a martini glass. Ha <laughs> ha. I started doing different shit. I made it look like Kermit the Frog. I was walking around, I was going, hi ho, Kermit the Frog here. They told me if I shaved my dick, it would make it look bigger. It just made it look older. Uh, <laughs> but we started doing shit we never did before. I took my kids paintballing. Do you paintball, anybody? No, only the white folks? Yeah, absolutely. We don't do that shit. Hey, but let me tell you something, white people. You take this shit serious than a motherfucker. Like, they had extra bandoliers of, like, extra ammo. The dude had extra CO2. One dude had an AR-15 that was modified so he could shoot fucking paintballs. I had the fucking gun they rented me. So as I'm walking up with my kids, you know, we show up with all these white people. And this one dude staring at me. He goes, hey, hey, hey. This first time you've been paintballing? Because <laughs> that's how all white people sound in my head. That's all I'm saying. I said, yeah, I ain't never been paintballing before. He said, this is a good place. Come for the first time because they don't even let me go full automatic here. And I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? So I shot him in the face right there. I'm from the hood. I ain't playing that shit. I shot my son in the dick before it started. <laughs> I can't even tell you why. I was just standing there and they're like, three, two. I said, Pfft. He just went, ah, hit the floor. He looked up and said, why, dad? I said, that's in case I don't see you later, dog. But it's good to see you guys out having a good time drinking again. Fuck yeah. I had to, I had to quit drinking because I almost fell in love with a transvestite in New Orleans one night. Uh, yeah, not an ugly one. Not like Wendy Williams or nothing. I'm talking about like, <laughs> that, that's an ugly bitch. I don't give a fuck what she was saying. I'm talking about, like, remember back in the day when Maury Povich had that show? Is it a man or a woman? He was looking at the TV going, I don't know, Maury. <laughs> that dude might could get it at 2.30 in the morning. I don't know. Hey, I was drunk as shit. Anybody been to New Orleans? Bourbon Street? Yeah. They got this drink called the Grenade. It comes in a big green plastic thing like this. I had, like, 17 of them bitches one night, right? And when I'm drunk, I only got two words in my whole vocabulary. All I got is, woo! <laughs> That's it. So as I'm walking down Bourbon Street, fucked up, I come across this perfect pair of legs, and I just stop and go, woo! Ha, ha! 
I come up to this beautiful booty, this flat little belly, these magnificent breasts. And when I get up to the Adam's apple, she said, you coming in or what? <laughs> I'm like, bitch, if I drink three more of these, <laughs> we might be married. I had to quit drinking. But I don't, I don't get drunk anymore, but I still go out and watch my boys do it. You ever do this? Yo, stay sober one night and watch your friends get drunk. It's a fucking party. I got one friend, every time he gets drunk, he wants to fight. He's four foot nine. He weighs 102 pounds, but you give him six shots of Jaeger, he's, let's kick their fucking asses. We watch him get his ass kicked every weekend. I got one friend I like to get drunk and tell jokes to because when he's drunk and he laughs, he looks just like Herman Munster. <laughs> I got one Mexican friend I love to death. Whenever he gets drunk, all you can understand is the first and last word in every sentence. He's like, Ale! I go to Riley, said a little mile, I go to Nile, I go to the mile, I go to the Another reason I stopped getting drunk is I got tired of losing fights to my wife at 4.30 in the morning because when I'm drunk and she's sober, her hand-eye coordination is better than mine. <laughs> she be straight punching me in the face and I'm going, when I catch one of you three motherfuckers, Ooh. I ain't told you about my wife yet. My wife is a thug. When I first met my wife, I thought she was a dude. Wait, let me explain. Back in the day, Everybody was wearing baggy jeans and baggy jerseys. She had a Kangol hat tipped backwards. She was standing on the corner with some people I knew, and I walked up, and all I could think is, man, that's a pretty dude right there. I have no idea why I'm so attracted to this fellow. But then we started dating. I got her home. We're about to make love. And fellas, you ever taken a girl home, taken her clothes off, and gotten that surprise? Not the bad one. Not the one where you picked up a girl at the club and she had a fat ass and some nice titties and you got her back to the hotel room and she started taking shit off and she took the bra off and the titties came right off with it. And she threw them on the dresser. <laughs> then she took her panties off and the booty was still attached and she threw that on the dresser. Then she took her hair off, threw that on the dresser, jumped in the bed, said, come get some and all you could think to do is go, fuck you, I'm jumping on the dresser. All the good shit's over there. Something about that good surprise. I got her naked and the girl was so fine, I turned into that dude from Sling Blade. I sat at the edge of the bed going, you the finest motherfucker I've seen in my life, huh? <laughs> but my wife is a thug. And what happened was, dude, you have been out at like 2.30 in the morning, looked at your watch and said, fuck it, I'm already in trouble. <laughs> I'm just gonna stay out. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> I try sneaking in the house at 8.30 in the morning. You know why you can't sneak in the house at 8.30 in the morning? Because the birds tell on your ass. Because as you're putting the key in the door, the birds are going. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm scared of my woman. Yo, I'm scared of my woman. I'm that dude. I turn the car off. I have a block up and coast to the front of the house. I tried to open up the door and sneak in, and she punched me right in the face. And when you get punched in the face and you're drunk, your reflexes are very slow. You open up the door and go, Pff. The third time she hits you, you start to sober up. Pff. Hold on, baby, wait, let me explain what happened, okay? We almost broke up that night. Not because she punched me in the face, but because she took my PlayStation 2 and threw it out the window. You know what my drunk ass did at 8.30 in the morning? I went and got my memory card. <laughs> I like it when my wife comes home drunk, though. That's a whole different scene. My wife was going out with girlfriends. You know how y'all do. We finna have girls night out. We finna kick it. Have a good time. Woo! That's how you know that women are about to get fucked up. When one of them goes, woo! I said, go ahead, boo, do your thing. I was at home in my underwear, watching Sports Center, eating crackers in bed like the fucking king. <laughs> 2 30 in the morning, my wife shows up drunk as hell, and she ain't scared of me. <laughs> she pulled the car right up to the front door and said, Rich! 
jumped out of the car, kicked open the front door of my house, ran into my house like Prince in Purple Rain. Where are you? Where are you, motherfucker? <laughs> I'm laying in bed going, what the fuck is going on? She kicked open the bedroom door and said, there you are. I'm still laying there going, what the fuck is going on? She said, mama found you. <laughs> mama been thinking about you all night. <laughs> mama want to... I swear to God. I swear to God, she finished throwing up. She came right back up, wiped off her mouth and went, mama want to make love. Oh, you know I fucked her, right? <laughs> I'm a married man. I get in where I fit, can finish. I love my wife very much. I've heard, this is my second marriage. Uh, my first marriage was for 18 years. I've been with this one 17, so this bitch got one year left. Well, she got to get the fuck out. Because apparently 18 is my fucking limit. <laughs> is, is that your wife? You, you, you thought about that shit too long, are you? <laughs> You're supposed to claim her right away. He's like, um, you had to check. Like, is that her? Because I don't know. Is she crazy? Dog, if you're scared, just blink. Don't say shit. Just blink. Like, <laughs> like a fucking hostage. Yeah, he just blinked. I got you, though. Yo, my wife is crazy as shit. My wife is half Mexican, half Puerto Rican, so she hates herself. Uh, <laughs> hey, she's crazy as shit, but I got to tell you something about me. I'm attracted to crazy. Like, I like crazy. If you're like a normal God-fearing church going, I don't want shit to do with your ass. I knew I was going to marry my wife the day she tried to stab me with a butcher knife. She grabbed the big triangular one out the wooden block in the kitchen, stabbed my Nissan Maxima four times before I got out the spot. And as I was driving away, I could see in the river being going, I'll kill you, you motherfucker. And all I could think is, I'm going to marry that bitch right there. Crazy. Crazy jealous. When I get home from L.A., the first thing she's going to do is hit me with that purple light. <laughs> What's that thing right there? I think it's mayonnaise. Lick it. Fuck you. You lick it. I'm not licking shit. We broke up 17 times before we got married. You ever that kind of relationship with a female where you fight all the time until you finally figure out you can't live without this crazy bitch? Yo, we broke up one time so bad I put everything I owned in my Caprice Classic because... You could put everything you own in a Caprice closet. I had nowhere to go, so I bought a bottle of Hennessy, drank the whole bottle of Hennessy, went to the casino, and put 100 bucks in the slot machine. But for two hours, we were arguing on the phone, just saying mean shit to each other. You know, shut up! I hate you! I never loved you! She said, shut up! You ain't shit! Your mama's breath smells like old hot dog water! Just mean shit. But the whole time I'm in Max bed on this machine, all of a sudden, all <laughs> you got that one? Fuck yeah, that's funny, I know. <laughs> the whole time I'm in Max bed on this machine, all of a sudden, all the bells and whistles go off, and I realize I just hit triple cherry, triple cherry, triple cherry on the pay line, on the progressive jackpot. And she's still arguing with me. And I'm like, shut up! Hold on! Shut up! Yo, that just happened? He said, yes, sir, you just won $14,367.68. And before I could put the phone back to my ear, she said, come home, baby. <laughs> that was the first time I ever made it rain. I was like, get naked! <laughs> I make it rain at home because you can get that money back. <laughs> they don't like that shit at the strip club. You try to get your money back, they don't like that shit at the strip club. <laughs> I love my wife very much, and she gave me a great, the greatest gift that a woman can give a man. I have children now. I love my kids. I do very much. I do love my kids. But we are Latinos. We're supposed to make babies. That's the way it is. <laughs> I got, I'll tell you what, I got, I, my kids, I love my kids. And I, I'm a really good father. It's a job I do the best because it's the one I love to do the most. I love being a dad. I do have one flaw as a father that I wish I could get rid of. I hate to lose. You too? I hate to lose. I'll cheat to win. I don't give a fuck what we're playing. If we're playing Monopoly, I want to own everything. If we're playing life, I want to fucking kill you. <laughs> so when I play board games with my kids, it's like, one, two, three, four, sorry! <laughs> But they know I'm not really sorry.
this has transferred into video games. Yo, I am a video gamer. Dude, I don't just want to beat your ass. I want to beat your ass and talk shit about you as I whoop your ass. I want to be that dude standing over in Mortal Kombat with your spine in my hand hearing the word fatality. This is the way I play. So when I play video games with my kids, I beat the shit out of my children. And my wife walk in and go, why you got to make the baby cry? Why you just can't let the baby win? And I'm sitting there going, fuck that. He got to come get this. But the first time they win is such a magical moment. My daughter Jennifer was 13 the first time she beat me at a game called Tekken. And I knew I was about to lose. And I said, nigga, shit, fuck, KO. She jumped up and went, yeah! Who's the bitch now? <laughs> and all I could do was sit there and go, that's my baby right there talking shit to her daddy. And I tell you, as much, as there's a moment as a father of boys. How many of you guys have sons? Anybody? Yes? Yes, sir. Hey, there's a moment when you have a son that your son becomes better than you. If you do the job right, if you do the fatherhood thing right, one day your son will be better than you. He'll make more money than you. He'll be better educated than you. He'll live a better life than you could have ever lived because that's the work that you put in. But that moment when it comes, it's a beautiful moment, but it also pisses you the fuck off. Because my son, when he was 16, right? My son was 16. I grabbed a basketball. And I said, hey, boy, you want to come get this ass whooping from your old man? And my son said, man, you ain't got nothing on me, dog. I'll whoop your ass. You know the fuck you playing with, dog? The kid had better game than me. But because I could talk so much shit, I got into his head and fucked his whole game up. And I beat him. And I didn't let him forget that shit for three years. <sighs> he came back from college, 19 years old, 6'2", 220, beautiful. And I grabbed the basketball and I say, boy, you want to come get this ass whooping from your daddy? He looked at me and said, you don't want none of this shit, old man. <laughs> he was right. But as much as I love my children, ladies, let me tell you something. I love you for giving us babies. I love you for the fact that you will go through the bullshit you go through for nine months to give a man a baby. I think it is the most perfect expression of a woman's love. And if I was a woman, I wouldn't do that shit for nobody. This shit look painful as hell. And you got to go to school, too. You got to take those LeSabre classes when they teach you how to breathe and shit, right? So you go to these LeSabre classes. Lamaze, but <laughs> I was thinking Buick. It was Pontiac. <laughs> My wife's water broke at 7 o'clock in the morning. I used to work nights. I go to like 6 a.m., watch a little TV, smoke a joint, go to sleep. This is my night. Shut up. This ain't your life. Seven o'clock in the morning, my wife's water breaks. She's going, baby, baby, my water broke. I'm asleep, high as hell, saying stupid shit like, I ain't thirsty. <laughs> she said, no, baby, my water broke. There's water all over the place. And I'm still going, get them out. Why you keep fucking with me? Then she got possessed on my ass. She said, no, my water broke. That will wake you the fuck up. So I put her in the car, I drive her to the hospital, I get to the hospital, they put her in a wheelchair, put her in an elevator, take her in a room, lay her on the bed, put her legs in these things called stirrups. And the only thing I could think was, man, I wish I had these things at home. And the contraction in her ass, she said, ah! And all I could do was go, breathe, baby, like this. That was all they taught me at LeSabre. She said, I hate you. And I'm still going, but baby, breathe like this. <laughs> I never loved you. Mommy, the doctor said you're supposed to breathe like this. <laughs> it's not your baby. Stop breathing right now, bitch. What? <laughs> then the doctor said, Mr. Ortiz, come on over here. You can see the baby's head coming out. And my stupid ass said, okay. <laughs> here I come. <laughs> Fellas, I watched as my private little Garden of Eden, my personal piece of paradise on this planet, had just become the black hole of Mamu. And it was stretching, and the only thing I could think was, man, I ain't never gonna hit the sides of that thing again, huh? <laughs> then, then the baby pops out. And women will tell you, my baby was born beautiful. This is a fucking lie. <laughs> Babies are born about four different colors, covered in all kinds of slimy shit, 
and their heads are pointy from passing through the birth canal. And the first thing the doctor wants to do is hand them to you. I'm straight, dog. Put it over there. I'm good. I'm good. I see the baby. Put it down. Quit playing. You play too much, dog. <laughs> and I got married really young. I got married to my high school sweetheart. She had basic training in the Army at 19 years old. At 19 years old, for those who served, God bless you. Thank you for your service. At 19 years old, I did not know a lot of things about women. Like, I did not know that all women have a different noise they make. When you guys get to that plateau, to that sexual place you need to be. I'm not trying to brag, fellas, but I know that I could get them there. Because I know, brothers, y'all got this cool ass saying, once you've had black, you never go back. Puerto Ricans, we got to say too, though. Once you've had some of this Puerto Rican tongue, you don't care how long the black man's hung. <laughs> I'm leaving tomorrow, baby. <laughs> but all women have a different noise. I had this one girl that as soon as you touched her, she purred like a kitten. As soon as you touched her, she said, <laughs> I didn't know what to do, so I was like, bad little kitty. <laughs> I had this one girl that made a noise like a pigeon. <laughs> Only I ain't shit, because I'd be behind her in the mirror like this. That shit was funny to me. I just go to say shit, only she'd be like, shit, shit, shit. And I knew she was there. I just want her to curse, but cursing messes with me because it makes me laugh. And I don't know if you've heard my laugh. <laughs> But my laugh does not belong in any sexual situation ever. Because <laughs> you're finally having sex and she goes, fuck me. <laughs> but I had this one girl that freaked me out, y'all. Yeah. I was with this girl. We were doing the deed. We were doing what Shakespeare called making the beast with two backs. And I got her to that point. Shut up. I read. I got her to that point, to that plateau. And she turned into the cowardly lion from The Wizard of Oz. So the guy, she's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> right there, right there, right there. And I jumped up like, you all right? <laughs> where'd you go? Where'd you go? <laughs> and I'll tell you what. I love my job. I love being a comedian. I've had some cool jobs over the years. Before I started doing comedy, I was a firefighter for 10 years. Before that, I was a nurse in the Army. And um, I've had some pretty cool jobs. This is my favorite job, not just because there's no drug testing, but... Uh, we didn't have to be at work till 6.45 tonight. And even then, I was late. It's a brown skin thing you white folks would not understand. That's why there are no black or Latino terrorists nowhere in the world, because you got to be on time. Fuck with a bomb. I always picture a black or Latino terrorist running through the airport, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> but my favorite thing, is I get to sit at home all day and watch TV. My favorite thing to watch on TV is white folks. But um, I watch TV with my kids all the time. Did y'all know that Sesame Street was still on the air? Yeah, I didn't know this. I was in the basement smoking a joint, right? I come upstairs. Well, fuck you. These ain't your kids. Smoking weed will make you a better parent. You will not kill your child if you're high. <laughs> I don't care how many, hey, how many times have I told you to stop that bullshit? You, 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 boy, as soon as I, boy, as soon as I, boy, as soon as I, boy, zoom, 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 zoom. Smoke a joint, save a life, that's all I'm saying. But I was watching TV with my baby boy, I got this fucked up idea. What would happen if Sesame Street grew up with us? If as we got older, the Sesame Street characters got older. Sesame Street might be a little different. Might go something like this. Fucked up day. Everything's not okay. 
Landlord says that the rent is late. And if I don't pay up real quick, I'll be out on Sesame Street. Hi ho, Kermit the Frog here. And I'm here on Sesame Street today to speak to you about the letters SEX and the number 69. <laughs> Hey there, Froggy baby! How you doing, little Froggy? Well, I'm not too good today, Grover. Oh, what's the matter, Froggy? Well, it's Piggy. She wants me to eat her. <laughs> well, what's wrong with that, Froggy? Well, I'm Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> But I've been watching a lot of TV lately, and let me tell you something. Lately, a lot of sports stars has started coming out the closet all of a sudden on TV. A couple of years ago, there was a basketball player, then a boxer, and a football player. They all came out the closet. Look, didn't bother me they came out the closet. What really bothered me was how the whole country reacted. They're like, oh my God, they came out as gay, and they're in the NBA. They're so brave. They're so courageous. Oh my God. And I'm thinking, really? In 2021, gay people, get over yourselves. We don't care no more. We don't care that you're gay. And plus, by the time you come out as gay, we've known you've been gay for 10 years. <laughs> my nephew, my nephew came out of the closet to me. This is my favorite nephew. I love this kid to death. And I knew that that moment of him coming out to his favorite uncle was a huge moment in the kid's life. But I had to bite my lip to keep from laughing. Because he walked up and he was like... <laughs> Uncle Alex? <laughs> I need to talk to you. <laughs> And I know that you're a comedian, but this is no time to be funny, okay? <laughs> you're my favorite uncle. And you've always treated me with love and respect. But I've been living with a secret. <laughs> And I'm scared that when I tell my secret, your love for me will decrease. <laughs> I swear to God, he said decrease. <laughs> Then he said, but I'm just going to do it, okay? Because I can't live the lie anymore. I am gay. <laughs> and all I could do is stand and go, what? For real? Like, I'm glad you figured that shit out. I know he was gay when he was nine years old, dancing to Barbie doll, singing En Vogue. Never gonna get it, never gonna get it. <laughs> Now, everything's coming back after the pandemic, and comedy's been pretty good. Uh, it's coming back again, and I'm kind of happy. But one of the coolest things happened to me, like, like two weeks ago, I was in a show in North Carolina, and after the show, these two old ladies, um, the young one was 96. <laughs> don't judge me, dog. You don't know my life, dog. <laughs> The old one was like 102. They came after me, they were at the show and they were like, Pitbull, Pitbull! Like, fuck you, I don't look like Pitbull, fuck you. <laughs> so they came to the after party after the show and they followed me around the whole after party, buying me drinks all night and the whole time they're going, Pitbull, Pitbull! So at the end of the night, the young one, the 96 year old, <laughs> walked up to me and she's like, Pitbull, it takes three to tango. <laughs> And I was like, is this chick talking about what the fuck I think she's talking about? So I fucked them, right? Uh, hey, don't judge me. It still counts. It's a threesome, dog. It still counts. A little KY jelly and some Viagra. I turned that dop into WAP all night long, baby. Yo, I'm Alex Ortiz. I stopped by for a little while. Thank you so much. Peace. This has been a Funny Media Moot production.